And, and we've had discussion this morning, Tony, that I think the point he was trying to make there was the locker room. And we all know that the locker room is a place where you can have a lot of uncomfortable conversations with people from many different backgrounds and try and work together. But you mentioned that you played for the Steelers and what Mr. Rooney told you. And it was just two weeks ago that Troy Vincent said, we have a broken system with only four minority head coaches in the NFL, where just a couple of years ago, it was eight. And you were one of those minority coaches not too long ago when you last coached for the Indianapolis Colts. So it, it's kind of a, a jarring statement on one level to, to say he doesn't see there's a problem when the NFL has admitted we do have a problem in hiring and promoting minorities in positions of power. You know, if you listen to that statement, there's a lot of truth in it. Um, Vic talked about it being a meritocracy, and it is, and in, in the locker room, and on the field. And, and I think we had 29 African Americans drafted in the first round out of 32 players. So, yes, there is progress there. And, yes, uh, there is working together. And a football locker room can be one of the greatest places in the world where you see people coming together from all different types of backgrounds chasing a common goal so that is true but to say there is no racism and no problem uh i i think really is is not recognizing the situation uh as you said you know the, the league has talked about having 70 to 75 percent african-american players and no black president uh just a couple of black general managers um there there are issues there and it is not a complete meritocracy even though it's a great place and I think the same thing could be said of our country. It is a great country. We have a lot of things going on. We have a lot of positive. But let's not say there's nothing wrong. I completely agree. And we're waiting to hear from Denver Bronco players and or maybe some of their coaching staff. And imagine there's going to be a conversation going on at some point there when players can get back together and and actually get to play the game of football, something we'll get, yeah. to, get to you in a few minutes. Yeah, but I have, I've talked to some people in Denver uh, in different places in that organization, and they, so the players are shocked at how white it is other than the locker room. Uh, so, you know, there, there are some issues, and we just have to understand that, and we've got to see it from uh, different points of view sometimes. So the, the one thing, Tony, and we've asked it right when this thing started, as, yeah. as we keep saying, three white guys who are like, okay, w what can we do? You know, and, and basically the thought was make, listen, listen and where you can be active, be active, but listen and, and, and understand. But for you, you mentioned the 60s. We had Herm Edwards on who mentioned the 60s. We had Anthony uh, Lynn talked about who's not as, as old as you guys, but going back to 92 and what he saw. I mean, what you and guys like Herm have seen over and over and over again outside the world of sports, in the world of sports, and what you have already said to us you must feel like you've said 10 times already in other situations. Why and how can it be different this time? Well, it has to be a heart change, Mike. We do have to see the whole playing field, and we can't just look at our little corner. And we've got to empathize with other people. Um, we, This is not going to be battled and won by, hey, I can throw a brick through a window and get your attention, and then you can come back uh, on the government side with a, a bigger gun and keep me under control. That That is not going to do it. We've got to sit down. We've got to look at each other, and we've got to have a heart for our country and say we're going to make this the best we can be, and we've got to listen to each other and try to solve this together, and that, that's what's going to happen. Uh, we had a lot of this going on in the, in the 60s, and I think Dr. King said it best. And really, that, that was my mentor, that, hey, we come and we sit down with people and we show them that we care about each other and we'll get some things done. We'll make some progress. Tony, I'm curious, and, and this is kind of more micro back on the football front, but you, you brought it up, the perception that you know guys were shocked at just how white the building was on the front office side in Denver, and I'm sure that could be said in, in other places. We did mention at the beginning of this the look at revamping the Rooney Rule and some of the things that have gone along with it. From the NFL side, as they look to be better in that going forward, I know we had a lot of solutions that were sort of offered up and some will, will be used going forward and some won't. 
as you look at it now, what do you think are ways that the NFL can improve itself in that regard that might actually have a chance of working in ways the Rooney rule hasn't at this point? Well, I think we have to look at everything and examine everything. And uh, we have to understand that it is not necessarily okay if our entire medical staff is white, our entire uh, ticket office is white, if our finance staff is white, if, uh, you know, everything other than the locker room is white, and we say, well, we've got a meritocracy and we've got uh, everything is just fine. Uh, That has an impact on people. And and so I think we've got to look at the whole structure and we've got to see how we can uh, foster a, a change of heart. And it is going to not be through legislation, I don't believe. I I don't think it's something you can say, hey, we we put this rule in, we interview this number of people, and that's going to make it work. Uh, We've got to get to the point where people understand that the best thing for our country, the best thing for our community, the best thing for our team is to have that change of heart and to try to be inclusive. Along those lines, Tony, does does most of that – or, or a high percentage, if not all, does that fall on the owners? I think it does. I mean, I, I look at the places that I've worked and in Pittsburgh, and I, I saw how it was run and, and what a difference that meant to Mr. Rooney. Uh, I worked for Lamar Hunt in Kansas City, and I saw it operate the same way. I saw it operate the same way with Jim Ursay in, in Indianapolis. And when, when you set the tone uh, that way from the top, it's going to happen. Uh, and when you have owners that have their eyes open and that uh, are, are willing to look at it honestly, um, that, that's when I think it's, it's going to make a difference. So I think it does in the NFL. It's going to start with the 32 owners, not with the commissioner, not with the league office, but with those individual owners. 